a welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we don't really know what we're going to be doing because I have a window the size of this, which you can't see if you're not watching the video, to um, be able to do this. So I'm going to try to do this in a very quick-ish fashion. You know what's crazy? Just now, I had an idea for this episode. I don't have time to come up with a new idea for this episode. And right now it was like, bam! Like, here's what you're doing today. So, I don't know. I guess I'm throwing out the script and um, doing something different. So, we'll see. Okay. So, anyway, first off, I want to thank you for all of you out there who have been telling people, oh, you know what? You should really, you should really subscribe to this podcast that this one sweet, cool-ass chap is doing called the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast. I just want to thank you guys. That is so amazing that you're doing that. And I love the fact that each and every one of you listening to this podcast this week is going to tell three people that this podcast is amazing and that they should listen to it. That is so sweet. And especially, especially since I know that you've already given this podcast five stars because you know it's the right thing to do and you wouldn't want to be a jerk. So I really appreciate that. You guys are wonderful. Big hugs and kisses to all of you. Oh my gosh. So um, back to me and my face and my fingers together. If you want to see all of this, you have to go to YouTube and hit the join button so you can actually witness video feeds of me brushing my mustache, lighten the thingy which I'll do right now, because that is how we do this shit here. So if you do not join on YouTube, at the, at the bottom tier, the thank you crew, you get to see the mug that overfloweth, okay? <sighs> Wonderful. And um, also, um, I got a new patron over on Patreon. So Deborah, I'm calling you out right now, Deborah has left the Patreon, and that's fine. Especially Deborah, if you want to come over to um, come over to YouTube and sign up on there, if you want to do that, that is awesome. So since we're talking about Patreon and um, the Anarchy Crew and members and all that stuff, let's get to the shoutouts before before I even forget. So over on Patreon, I want to give a big thank you to Michael, to Cedar, to Harry. And a big motherfucking thank you to the newest member on Patreon, Chase. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. You are amazing. And now for the thank you crew, homies, let's say a big thank you to Patrick, to JH, and to Britt. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I love you. And now for those big swinging pendulums. Over the damn MF and Anarchy crew. I want to give a big thank you to... To Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim, to Lisa, to Josh, to Alan, to Jessica, to Shaylin, to Caitlin, to Andrew, and back by popular demand, I want to give a big thank you to... And welcome back to Hannah... Thank you, Hannah. You're amazing. I'm glad you're back. And a big motherfucking thank you to the number one chappy, the SDG. Thank you so much. I love you. If you want to be one of the cool kids and get into the Anarchy Crew and be able to go through over 100 videos of lessons, assignments, workshops, writing prompts, the whole fucking shebang, you need to get over there. Go to youtube.com slash at Matt Wall. I don't know how the ats work, but whatever. Or you could just go to my you or my website, I hate mattwall.com, click the YouTube icon, and that'll take you right over there. And then just click join. And underneath you will see different tiers. You will see the thank you crew, which is how you get to see this. And every little once in a while you get a little something extra. Or you could join the Anarchy Crew and get all that awesome stuff I was talking about. Or if you are a big bala, you can join the Chapbook of the Month Club. And I will send you whatever I put together that month. 
It's so simple. Like, I can't make this any easier. Maybe I'll try. Maybe I'll fucking try to make this easier. We'll see how that goes. Whew. Okay. And now, real quick, I want to also inform you of something. On January 20th, yours truly, this guy with two thumbs, will be the featured poet at the Garage Poets um, open mic. So, I will have a link in the description below to where you can be a part of that and see that or join the open mic. Jump in and do the thing. Okay, so that'll be a lot of fun. So, there is that, and I believe that's it um yeah we'll do questions on the next episode so let's get in to the main gristle and we're back oh thank you guys it has been so long so today what we're going to talk about is actually something that i got a little worried about and it turns out that it's not really anything I need to worry about. I, I got a little, I got a little tripped out by something here. So if you have sent a question in, um, I will be or an email or anything like that. That will be in the next episode. Okay. So I already have all this stuff in this thing right here that I'm looking at, talking about that. So to give you a idea of what things I'm going to be talking about um, next time, we're going to be talking about coffee, Anarchy Crew repurposing content, writers using social media, and publishing books on Kindle Unlimited. So those are just some of the questions that we will be addressing and undressing next time. But today, what I wanted to get into is something, and I don't know exactly how much I should talk about. When people come into the Anarchy Crew, I want the best for them, okay? I want the best for them because I want them to succeed. It makes the Anarchy Crew look, and taking the Poetic Anarchy course, look like it is helpful, which I 100% believe it is, because that's how I've been doing everything I do anyway. You know what I'm saying? So I want you to be successful for you. I want you to be successful for the Anarchy Crew. But I also want you to be successful because we need successful poets we need poetry to be successful because if poetry is successful like okay so let me say it like this if there are successful poets that means that there is a hunger for poetry and the more poets that go out there and become successful the more life that breathes into poetry. That means there are more people reading poetry, people telling their friends to read poetry, people reciting poems back and forth to each other, people sending their friends their favorite poems and all this stuff. And it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds. And the thing that drives me crazy when I talk to people about poetry and po poetry's popularity with the exception of the Insta poet boom that just happened, the only other time people can like bring up when poetry was popular is like the 30s, for fuck's sake. And it's like, well, I mean, there were tons of successful poets in between the 30s and now. Like you had all of the beat poets, you had all of the the meat poets in the 70s, you know, like there have and Good God, all of the other poets in the schools that I don't read or care about. Like, there have been successful poets all over the place. Now, turning a successful poetry career into popular poetry seems to be a problem. Seems to be something that not everyone can wrap their head around, which I don't get it. There, there's a couple things I want to talk about here. One would be... Why are there not rock star poets right now? Like, we have, and if someone says Rupi fucking Cower, I'm gonna fucking lose my shit. Nothing against her, but, but like, there are more poets than her. And some of you might say Ocean Bong, and that might be a thing too. And that might be correct. But there should be more, okay? So, this, there's this guy, Amit Majmadar, who was interviewed on Slee Ricketts a while back. Then he came up again on Slee Ricketts and um, Bucks and Brian were talking about it. And then um, I got drunk and ran my mouth and, and um, 
then uh, my email got read and all this other shit. But honestly, it's important, okay? And basically what um, Amit said in this little bit, um, and I can't find it here, so I'm just going to have to try to remember it. But they were talking about how people find him arrogant. Some people find him arrogant. And he said, if my confidence comes across as arrogance, that's just your own insecurity and your own work. And I was like, this motherfucker, oh my God. So honestly, I'm not a huge fan of his poetry. But, and I'm, and I'm definitely not a fan of how he reads his poetry. And that might be part of it. And some people read very theatrically, and that's fine if you're into that kind of thing. Not everything has to be for everybody. It's fine. But his attitude about his art, it's like he is a fucking brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, I am so right there with him. So I would love to have him on and we could just talk about, I don't know, being fucking arrogant and not giving a shit about it. I love it. So Ahmed, if you're fucking listening to this, I don't know why you would be, but if you just fucking stumbled upon it, I hate Matt Wall at gmail.com. Send me an email and let me know that you want to come on here and shoot the shit. If not, you'll probably be getting an email from me eventually here once I pull my head out of my ass. But the other thing in all of this, a poet I know had um, an issue come up recently where they just put out a book and um, it's been, I guess, a couple months now or something or a month or so. And they feel like maybe that was the only book they had in them. They were talking to me about like wondering if there was a fatigue after you put out a book. And there totally could be, especially with your first book, like you get it out and like you feel like you just like had your soul ripped out and like you just gave birth, you know, and you created something and now it's out in the world. It's very heavy. Okay. And then once that's done, it's like, what do I do now? And you almost kind of go through like a weird, like postpartum fucking depression once that happens. And I don't know if it's exactly the same thing, but like, you know, when you're trying to put the book out, when you're trying to put the book together, like your support system is all helping you go and helping you go and, oh, are you okay? Is this working out? Oh, okay. And then once the book's out there, instead of like being all like helping you and hugging on you, they're trying to help the book get sold. They're like telling their friends about the book and they're like worried about book sales and shit like that. So it is kind of like that same thing where once it was in you, it was, are you okay? And how's it going? Are you feeling good about it? And then once the book's out, it's like, how's the book doing? Is the book doing okay? Oh my gosh. It could be that kind of thing. But the other thing this poet said was, you know, everything in that book was, it was like heavy, traumatic shit. And now that I got all that out of me, like, I don't know if I have anything else to write. And what I said was, you are not your trauma. You are a vibrant person who has a vibrant life. There's tons of stuff going on around you. You have family, you have friends, where you live, you have all this stuff, like your the city you're in, the the nature in that area, like all of these things. These are all the things that make you tick. Your trauma is not what defines you. You know, it's how you live after going through something that defines you. And so when that came up, it was kind of like a thing where I think a lot of people need to know that when you're writing about traumatic shit, you're doing that because you have to. You have to get that out. But then once you do that and it's all out in the world and everything, if you feel like you don't have anything else to write, it's usually because you're not asking yourself how you feel about other things. Okay? 
you, you kind of like build walls up. And a lot of times when you go through something really traumatic, you have to build walls up or else you'll crumble, you know? And I get that. I get that 100%. But when you are out there and you, and you see a bird on a wire, you know, how does that make you feel? Like, what do you see when you see that? When you see roadkill, how does that make you feel? Is that roadkill a metaphor for something in your life? Is that bird a metaphor for something in your life? Is that tree a metaphor for something in your life? How do these things make you feel? What does the air smell like? What do things feel like on your hand when you touch them? You know, you, if writing a bunch of traumatic shit was how you got into poetry, it's not like that that's the only thing there because what you learn to do is discover how to convey your pain and your emotion. But now that you know how to do that, it doesn't mean you have to just convey pain. There are other things that you could talk about, things that happen all throughout the day. What happened when you walked into the kitchen today? Who was the first person you saw today? What was the first word said to you today? What, where did you go today? What was the color of the first car you saw drive by today? Like there are tons and tons of things that you could write about. And some of you might be going, well, but this, is it worth writing about? That's not the fucking question. What makes it worth writing about is you fucking writing about it and how you observe that and how you feel that. What does that say to you? Tell me that. That's what makes it worth fucking writing about. Like, fucking poetry doesn't have to be all fucking razor blades and fucking nooses, guys. Like, there's all sorts of shit you could write about. And when you write about other shit, it doesn't have to be boring. Okay? Because you are unique and people need to hear how you see the world. That is very, very important. So share that with everybody. <sighs> that was my um, two cents on that. So because my window is now even smaller than before, let me try to just get to the butt plugs. So again, make sure January 20th, mark it on your effing calendars guys i am going to be the featured poet at the garage poets links will be in the description um and you can come to that or take part in it okay very very cool um also things i've been doing on youtube i don't know how it's gonna go i put the video up today but um it was a bit scathing i'm not gonna lie but i put up an hour video okay called how to not start a small press because someone was starting a small press and I thought their idea was great. I thought their ethics were garbage. And um, I did a response video to their announcement videos. Don't know if that was the best thing I could have done, but you know what? Um, I did it. So now I have to lay in it or however that saying goes. So you might want to take a look at that. Poetic Anarchy in um, the Anarchy Crew this week, we were talking about um, publishing your stuff and how different things you can add to your content that you send to people when people make a purchase, how adding little things can make a huge impression and build lifelong fans. So that was kind of what Anarchy Crew went over this week. And again, if you join the Anarchy Crew, there are weekly live streams every Friday. Um, for right now, it's every Friday um, that are members only. And um, Anarchy or Poetic Anarchy Volume Three, I fucked up the. Uh, I didn't change the table of contents when I changed the books when I rearranged stuff in the book. So that's coming back now, and I have to fix that. And um, so hopefully next week where the following week I will have a copy of the book that I could shake and show you. Um, Blood Rag Issue 7, out now. It has poems by Ethan McGuire, Matthew Buckley Smith, Mark Rennie, 
Alan Mahan, B.L. Kohler, Garrett Carroll, and yours truly. So definitely pick that up. It's a dollar with free shipping. You can't beat that with a rubber chicken. Okay. Um, but go over. Um, there's something wrong with my mailing list. I have discovered this. So I'm going to not tell everyone to go sign up for my mailing list right now. I'm going to try to figure out what the fuck the problem is. I think I know. And I think it was when I changed from MailChimp to MailerLite. So we're going to get to the bottom of that. Um, if you want to do the mentorship thing with me, um, I could help you figure out a marketing plan for your book, figure out how to kind of put your career on a trajectory to where you can actually do something with it. Um, so if you want to do that, you could hit me up at I hate Matt wall or go to I hate Matt wall.com slash mentorship. Uh, you get my chat books at my Etsy shop. Um, next week I will be unveiling the new chat book off the grid. This is MacArthur park out now. I have books on Amazon and um, my music is everywhere, and you know all about that. So again, if you have any questions or comments, the question show is coming up on Saturday. So if you have questions, email them to me at IHateMattWall gmail.com, or if you just have comments and you want to tell me how awesome I am or how nice my beard looks today, I think I'm going to cut a ton of my beard off. So that might be something that's happening. But anyway, keep buying my books. Type hard, everybody. Keep doing what you do, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.